One day I'll remember to unmute my mic. Hello everybody, welcome to QOwn. My name is Quentin, and today we return to another Helldivers Tuesday. Today is 4-16-24, although in my notes it is written as 4-16-26, so welcome to the future. Last Tuesday, our supervisor informed us, our superiors, not our super f Last Tuesday, our superiors informed us that we were being moved to Libcon 1 as the bots came back with a larger force than ever. We were tasked with defending five planets and given a new mission type, High Value Asset Evacuation, where we have to defend eight rockets with high value assets as they launch. We did our best to hold the Lakyle and Hydra sectors, focusing on Menkent. By Wednesday, we had already been pushed into the Andromeda sector, though we held Menkent and Vernon Wells. We were, on Thursday, given a new war bond to assist in the bloody fight against the bots. We were given new, uh, three new armor sets, the- I need my glasses. Uh, Demolition Specialist, the CE-27 Groundbreaker, and the FS-55 Devastator. I have not done any actual looking at the armor, but it's not really anything new. The Groundbreaker did have a bug on it where it was given the wrong armor effect. I don't remember what it was uh, initially, but it is fixed now, and it will it, give it you was, extra... It uh, was servo-assisted, and then ah. now it's the engineer kit. Yes, and the engineer kit is what it was intended to be, so it is as it should be now. That said, the new player banners, capes, and emotes that we were given so far, the only one I've seen anybody use is the boxer. I kind of want the courtly bow, as that just seems really fun. Also, the Eagle's Fury cape, for whatever reason, looks dope to me. The new weapons, I have a couple notes to go over, based on how Helldivers have been using them since Thursday. The new Adjudicator, or DMR, needs a serious rework, as it fails to consistently provide any necessary damage for its small mag size. The Eruptor, however, has proven useful at taking out or at least subduing all Devastators. Definitely good for Stalwart Enjoyers, as it can be used as your foe support weapon, while the Stalwart can replace your main weapon. The Grenade Pistol, or the GP31 grenade pistol as expected rips through enemies and finally uh not only provides an alternative to the redeemer but makes stun grenades much more useful the cb9 exploding crossbow is not that bad for those who say it is you should report to your nearest democracy officer for treason when hitting weak points it does a hundred percent I uh, I went over the DMR. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. That is all there is and to say. And saying that's not treason, but saying the crossbow is bad. Okay. One is true. When hitting weak uh, weak points, the crossbow does do a hundred percent more damage, as explosive damage should do. That is the priority of explosive damage, and that's the thing a lot of people don't seem to be understanding when it comes to ranking the crossbow is they think it is an AOE. It's not. It's meant for violating weak points. That is the best way I can put it. That is where its usefulness lies, That and it is somewhat decent crowd control. All that said, the new weapons were not enough to succeed the Major Order, and on Friday, we unfortunately did fail. I'm gonna go ahead and... Oh, I didn't even talk about- I didn't put these in my notes, but we also got access to some new upgrades for the ship. Atmospheric monitoring, which allows orbital barrages to reduce their spread by 15%, a, a very useful upgrade that actually makes the barrages quite viable for their intended purpose. It is a shame you have to purchase a level 4 upgrade to be able to effectively use them, but it, it is still nice. The XXL Weapons Bay adds an additional bomb to eagles that drop multiple bombs. And it, it that part is very worth noting. Multiple bombs. This does not apply to the 500 kilogram. I saw a lot of people upset over that. Superior packing methodology. This is currently broken. It is supposed to uh, refill support weapons fully from resupply boxes. However, it is not currently working. They are aware of the issue and planning to fix it. However, there is, uh, with the new patch notes, no fix uh, available. Enhanced Combustion. This one has been causing some problems as it increases fire damage from stratagems by 25%. This does include the Flamethrower, and frankly, the Flamethrower has been causing a bit of a problem lately as fire damage overall was buffed due to a bug. Whenever the flame weapons and general tick damage weapons were not being used very often because 
unless you are the host, they do not apply tick damage. So if you are not the host of your lobby, flame weapons and overall tick damage are entirely useless. But if you are the host, they currently one-shot just about anything you can fight because the bug caused a lower usage in these stratagems, and so fire damage was buffed immensely. This does apply to divers as well, as currently if you are hit by any kind of flame, you are gone. There is no ducking and rolling. You are, you're dead. It's over. That said, the circuit expansion upgrade to the engineering bay, which I have not actually seen anybody talking about, as all it does is increase the amount of enemies that lightning arcs will hit by one. Not as effective as some of these other ones. The arc thrower is still incredibly viable, the arc tower is still great for defense missions, but it's just like, was that the fourth upgrade that we really needed for the engineering bay? I'm not really sure. As for the robotics workshop, we got blast absorption, which increases defense for sentry turrets by 50, uh, yes, by 50%. This is a very, very necessary upgrade as whenever doing any kind of defense mission, sentries need to be placed out of the way or they're gone instantly. So having a little bit of extra defense is very useful. I don't really think it's going to help the mortars very much as they tend to die by shooting themselves more than the enemies hitting them. So on Friday, a new major order began to hold the Menkent line, as it was called, preventing the bots from progressing deeper than they have. The focus on the new bot front seemed to have once again granted the bugs an opportunity to begin pushing once more into our hard won planets, Hellmire and Crimsica. On the bright side, by Saturday, we'd made significant progress on the Menkent line, liberating Menkent and pushing to Lasaf. I kept calling it Lasalth in my notes, I don't know why. Back on the bug front, we did lose the fight for Krimska and Hellmire, but we will no doubt reintroduce them to Liberty soon. Actually, I'm curious. Let me run back over to my map. Where are we at with those right now? So it does actually appear Krimska is fully liberated, and Hellmire is currently sitting at just under 6%. There are 7,000 hell divers on Hellmire. Any of the 24,000 on Oceane, if you want to head over to Hellmire, recapture that planet in the name of democracy. By all means, do so. That said, on Sunday night, we had taken both Menken and Lasath with a day left to hold them for the Major Order. And additionally, we did get Draco back under control, though 40 Prime has fallen in the time since. Successfully, we did hold the Menkent line by the end of the Major Order, and they are, at this point, still fully liberated, with Lasath being the only planet liberated in the Lakail sector. Um, I can never decide how to pronounce that if it's Lakail, 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 but we did receive a new Major Order to liberate and hold Markarth. Mar- Marfark. We have Marfark, Martail, and Martyr Bay. The current major order, like I said, is to hold Marfark for another day and seven hours. Unfortunately, to make this harder on our lovely divers, the dastardly automatons have deployed a new unit in full force. The Factory Strider, whose prototype hadn't been seen since Operation Swift Disassembly, has begun arriving on dropships. But that concludes my notes. We do still have a new set of patch notes to go over. On our new patch notes, we did get some fixes to armor passives. I believe that is referring to the armor that we spoke of earlier and various improvements to stability. Not very in-depth patch notes today. They're it's more of a hot fix. So the Groundbreaker armor now has the Engineer Kit passive, as previously advertised, and the rest are just fixes. So we fixed multiple crashes that would occur in the loadout screen when other players left or joined the game, fixed multiple crashes that could occur after extraction when the mission results and rewards were shown, fixed crash which would occur when throwing back a grenade while wielding a heat-based weapon. Uh, for all of these fixes, that is the only one I think I have encountered. Fixed session, uh, fixed crash that could occur when hosting a play session migrates to another player. Fixed crash that could occur if too many civilians spawn. Yeah, we don't want people. That's, just get rid of them. <laughs> no people. <laughs> no people. Fixed various other crashes that could occur when deploying to mission. Fixed various other crashes that could occur during gameplay. Very generic, but that's fine. Other fixes fixed an issue that resulted in different damage being dealt enemies between PC and console players. So, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago on the news, where the arc thrower and railgun were both able to kill a bile titan if 
the host was a PS5 player. There was talk that it was just PS5 players in general, not just the hosts, but I'm not certain of that. But it does appear that has been fixed, unfortunately, which means those weapons are not going to be as useful against the larger enemies. But that makes sense. That's what we have stratagems for. Red boxes in defense missions are no longer visible. Were you seeing any of those? Because I did not see any of those. Maybe I just thought they were... Oh no, I totally did see those! I have those on stream! They were just these weird collision boxes. Anyway, major orders should now properly display text. I don't know when that was happening. As for the known issues, the major ones I want to talk about, for the most part, they're the same. Damage over time effects may only apply when dealt by the host. That one was mentioned earlier. Players may experience delays in medals and super credit payouts. We've been dealing with that since day one, so I'm very interested to see that they finally put it on the notes. Enemies that bleed out do not progress personal orders and eradicate missions. Given that my favorite way to deal with the hulks is to shoot them in the back and wait for them to just die on their own, that's very useful because I'll actually get, you know, progress from that certain weapons like the sickle cannot shoot through foliage i wish they had just given us a list of weapons that couldn't do that so that we could pay attention to that and see uh, that all of them were fixed scopes on some weapons such as the anti-material rifle are slightly misaligned i have actually moved back to using the anti-material rifle as it can two shot hulks it's incredibly powerful now, so getting get, getting some adjustments made on those scopes would be very nice. The spear's targeting is inconsistent, making it hard to lock onto larger enemies. Dude, nobody is using the spear. It doesn't lock on. Well, it locks onto shit, but it doesn't hit it. I have seen rockets circle enemies and come back to the hell diver. <laughs> Explosions do not break your limbs except for when you fly into a rock. That's been an issue for a little while. I thought they fixed it already, but it seems to be back. This is a big one for me. The area around Automaton Detector Tower, or the Eye of Sauron, as we call it, makes blue stratagems such as the hell bomb bounce and be repelled when trying to call them down close to the tower i have had this happen so many times it'll be very nice to have that fixed so i hope that is fixed by the next patch and as always the planet liberation reaches 100 percent at the end of every defense mission that, that's been an issue for weeks i'd very much like to see that one fixed but that is all i have for our announcements so with no uh, further waiting, I'm gonna put you guys in a waiting screen so that I can get ready for the actual stream. I never made my dinner, it's just sitting on the counter, frozen. Um, so I'm gonna go get that started, and... Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed. This was my first episode of my Helldivers Tuesday news section, edited down into a digestible video for you guys. I know I haven't been putting out a lot of videos lately, and I hope you guys can forgive me for that, but I have been live streaming two to three times a week, every single week. That does include Helldivers Tuesdays, where you can see me go through the news and play the game, of course, for a couple hours every Tuesday. Then that also includes Pokemon Legends Arceus on Thursdays, so please go check that out. We are actually very nearly done with the game, and then I will be moving on to Pokemon X and Y, so please look forward to that. And finally, we do a random game every single week on Friday. I think I already said that. <laughs> this Friday, we will be playing a game called Deep in the Fear. It is a multiplayer horror co-op game <laughs> uh, quite similar to Escape the Backroom, so I'll be looking forward to playing that for you guys, so please do stop by and stop by every week. Subscribe while you're at it. That said, that will tie up the end of this video. So remember, be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.